So maybe let's just go into it and like, I don't know if you guys have heard about what J is, um, but it's a language being developed by Jonathan Blow, who's like a really talented guy. He's done like the Braid and, uh, Braid and uh, the Witness. And he started doing a language like five years ago. And the whole purpose of the language is this idea that, you know, you should have still a language that is very high performant, that you can go really to the low level, but you still can be very productive with it, right? And it should bring some of that fun into programming again, instead of making it just a job. And this is something that really, when I started using it, struck a chord with me because I haven't had this much fun programming since I kind of started programming because it's it's just everything is so easy right every it, you'll see what i mean and hopefully i'll be able to convince you guys to to switch or at least you know not maybe not switch but try to keep an eye out on what's happening with this language and i if you find this interesting i highly recommend that you check the streams that he does because they're really really good uh they're very interesting streams he does streams about just conceptual stuff with the language um, you know his ideas and whatever he does the streams there where he implements the language and he has streams where he's showing off the engine and game that they're making with the language so it's a language that's already pretty robust like actual things are being built with it so it's pretty cool so I would like to start with just one simple thing that is you know the typical hello world <clears throat> and something that is uh, like it's it's hmm. it's one of those things that it's always a bit annoying when you start doing something with the low level languages like C and C++ it's like setting up that initial environment so that you have to you know find out what's going to be how are you going to build a program how are you going to link this how are you going to make that this runs in multiple platforms and stuff like this and I love this about J on about just how simple it is if you want to compile something you just go J the name of the file and that's it and basically at the moment we have an error that tells us um, let me do that again that just tells us uh, there's no entry point so there's nothing that starts a program and the entry point name is main so like in, in C like in C you have something that is like this right um, and J it's very similar but it's um, there's a few differences. The first is that there's no return type. It's void. It's kind of like C sharp, I guess. And the second, and I'll explain this stuff later, but for now we'll just go with it, is that you define a function by putting the name and then these two uh, commas, uh, not commas. What are they called? What are they called? Completely blanked out. These two dots on top, colons, that's it, thanks. <laughs> the two vertical dots. Um, so basically, this is all you need to define a function, yeah? And if you run it again, you'll see that it ran, and you have there the hello world, but at the moment, since it's it doesn't have anything, it doesn't do anything, right? So like C, when you want to do something, you need to, like, add some kind of library, right? In, in C, it's like include stuff in C Sharp and C++. Here, it's called import, and these are called modules. So he keeps a different name because the idea is that he wants to have like different nomenclature. So a module is like a library or a package in, in um, J, and um, when he mentions libraries, he's talking about like C Sharp, uh, C uh, and C++ libraries like DLLs and stuff like that. And the one we're in, including here is basic. And to print, it has a function like um, printf, right? So you can just go here and you just write whatever you want. And you go and you build. And then you run it. And basically, you have a hello world. And the way this is like uh, printf is like in, in C you have these kinds of things that, you know, you do something like this. So if you want to print a, a, um, a string, you need to know that it's a, 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 a percentage S. If it's an int, you need to do a D or something like this. It's, it's a, for me, these things are always annoying because I a lot of times don't use them. And then when I need to use them, I need to go check exactly for this type what I need to put. And 
C sharp kind of improved that in my opinion because you kind of just go like okay I want to print zero and to me this is cool only if you kind of need to refer to the same thing twice so you can put zero one two and then bring back zero right but here it's simply just go percentage and it just prints whatever that is so we'll do it again clear hello world and it's there just to make sure that this works we're just going to put here something else uh, right and clear hello world. so cool things about this why why this stuff kind of just feels so great to work with the first thing is I didn't install anything this is just a zip file that he sent us and it's just it's here is exactly content of, of the zip file the only thing that I did is I added J to the path so that but this is the OS thing right so I don't have to go like C J binary J right I can just type J and it finds it and the modules I didn't say where the modules were right so at the moment this I'm, it's most likely going to change but at the moment the way it works is I think he finds like the first folder called J and then just looks inside of that but it's just so relaxing that you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff like it just works it's it's super super cool um, a few more things that I'd like to show you here is that um, this language is very powerful and you can do things like you can tell the compiler to do things at compile time so you can just go run main and what's going to happen is when I build it it's going to execute the thing and you can do a lot of stuff with this I I need to f I don't know exactly the name of that uh, talk Oz if you remember that talk if you could even paste it or something because there's a talk where he talks about the compiler and he does this app through this that while compiling your program it launches a window it's playing music and it's parsing what the compiler is doing and giving you like uh, statistics of what's happening it's really really powerful and so the the interesting thing about this is that for example I don't have to have a uh, main here and we're not going to do this um, we're going because we don't want to be building stuff all the time so I just want that I have a function and I'm just going to tell it to run and let me just remove so that you see like and hello dot pdb cool and basically he the, he runs that code and this is just um, that error initial error that we got that it basically the compiler just reaches a point and it found no main so it just prints this error I'm not sure if in the future this will not change and he'll allow us to just get rid of this message because I think that this could also work as just a generic language to do scripting because it's really really powerful and the last thing I wanted to show about this is you know okay this is, has a file but let's say that we have another file right that we want to just have this function there Opa. Classic. so we just want to have this here right and because we're printing we need to tell it okay import the basic and here we're just going to go back to main we're just going to go F and now we need to tell her where, where the, um, the other file is and we just have this directive that is other so now if we go clear because I put again the main it built the main and I go so I basically just told it where cool thanks man um, I just told it where the first file I want to compile is I didn't have to say anything else like nothing it's 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 so refreshing when you're used to this kind of stuff with with C and, and C++ because even if you're like in a big company like uh, at CD project when we had like those people that will set up the whole build system for you but you're still going to have to open those Lua files or whatever and put like oh now put this class here and the H and the, this the CPP it's just so it's so refreshing to not have that friction I really 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 love this kind of stuff so do you guys have any questions about this so far like uh, 
Anything that you'd like to ask about this stuff? Let's get rid of also the windows. System noises. There we go. Yes. The files that you reference, you need to uh, load them. It, unless they are modules. And by the way, I can also show what the module is. So basically here on the J uh, folder, there's a modules folder. folder. And you open it up and these are all folders and there's this basic one. And I'm not sure about the rules here, but I'm pretty sure that you have to have a module.j on that folder. But then basically this is all this is these are not pre-compiled libraries. This is all code that you can just check if you want. If you want to see how something is working, a lot of this you can just check here. Like most of the language at the moment, you can just browse and figure out how this stuff works. What if you have a few files with the same name of function? So, um, today we were talking about, uh, like Oz spotted that, that there's a way that I think you can do something like, okay, well, we can just try it, yeah? Um, and let's say that the other file too will also have the same thing as this one. Right. So here, if you would say load other file, and you would say, well, I'll check that. In this. I'll change that so that it's slightly different. Yeah. Print world two. So you can tell it to load. But how was the syntax? I think it was something like. Um, I think it was something like this. Let's see if this compiles. But then you would go like initial dot. Let me see. We're going into uncharted territory. No. So I don't remember what is the. Don't remember what is the syntax. Poo, 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 poo. This is going great. <laughs> uh, what was the name? Okay, so it's doing it with the import. Okay, 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 okay. So no, at the moment I don't know how you do this with the load. That's interesting. I'd expect that it would work the same. So yeah, at the moment I don't know, but I can ask. <laughs> Most likely now, well, I assume that this is going to give an error. So yeah, I wonder how I wonder how it's going to, 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 to do that. But I expected that it would be the same, the exact same syntax, but guess not. Mm. I'm pretty sure there's a way. 